Hello and welcome to Diabetic 365 and today we have our diabetic educator Jill who is going to educate us on two topics. One is carb counting for diabetics and also the other one is uh, uh, what kind of dressings are good for on uh, salads or, or you know on different recipes or whatever what are some of the diabetic friendly uh, salad dressings or salad uh, flavors that you need to add. So, uh, without wasting any more time, uh, hey Jill, welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. Uh, thank you for being on the show. So, the first topic is about carb counting, right? So, um, the ma many people have the question like, what kind of carbs is better for a diabetic? What, what amount of carbs is good for a diabetic? So, the first question is, the basic stuff, what are these carbs in the foods actually made of? Okay, well, carbohydrates are sugars, starches, and fibers for the most part. And these carbohydrates are the nutrient that affect blood sugars the most. So the more carbohydrate we eat, the higher the blood sugar will go after eating. And the carbohydrate-rich foods are, of course, sugar like you put in your tea and your coffee, um, sweets like ice cream and cake, but it's also in a lot of very healthy, nutritious foods like fruit, in whole grains, vegetables, starchy vegetables like peas, potato, corn. Um, I don't remember if I already said milk and yogurt, but that would also be uh, hydrate rich foods. So uh, do you, the first question here is, uh, um, you know, like our body needs carbohydrates uh, for functioning. So these are, they're the basic essentials, like, a, uh, you know, fuel or gas for a car. So Basically, why should a diabetic need to take, uh, you know, this amount of carbs? Because uh, they keep affecting the blood sugar. So, uh, can you tell us, like, do diabetic needs to take more amount of carbs or less amount of carbs? Well, the amount of carbohydrate that a person with diabetes needs has to be individualized. So, first, I, I recommend that everybody with diabetes see a registered dietitian to get an individualized meal plan. But the amount of carbohydrate that somebody needs is based on that person's medications, exercise, lifestyle, um, diet preferences, um, insulin resistance or insulin sensitivity. It's very, very complex. Mm -hmm. We don't like to see people go on a very low carbohydrate diet, but we want the carbohydrate to be controlled. So it's definitely individualized. So see somebody who can help you make an individualized plan that works in your life for you. Mm -hmm. uh, but the problem with having it being too many, as I said just a minute ago, the larger the amount of carbohydrate that we eat, the higher the blood glucose goes after eating. So you eat a small amount, it goes up a little. You eat a large amount, it goes up a lot. So that part has to be controlled. But if you um, get too much, so it becomes hard to control your blood glucose, and it's probably going to be hard to control your weight. But if you get too few, then you're not getting the fuel that your body needs. You're not getting the fuel that your brain needs. Mm -hmm. um, some studies will show that people who have too little carbohydrate have some cognitive um, deficits, particularly in memory. Mm -hmm. And also, without getting enough carbohydrate, then you're eliminating all those healthy food groups, the mm -hmm. fruits, the whole grains, milk, yogurt, all those things um, that your body needs to get other nutrients to fight heart disease and complications of diabetes. Mm -hmm. So uh, here, uh, when we talk about carbohydrates, um, in the literature it says there are simple carbohydrates, there are complex carbohydrates. What are the different, uh, you know, what is the difference between these two groups and which one should be consumed by a diabetic? Well, I don't use those classifications that often, but a simple carbohydrate is just, it's a chemical, it's a description of the chemistry. So it's either a single sugar molecule or two sugar molecules together, and complex carbohydrates are when they are longer strings of sugar molecules, like in starches. In terms of the physiology of the blood sugar, that's not necessarily the best classification. Mm -hmm. 
So it used to be that we thought that the simple carbohydrates, like that found in fruit, would raise blood sugars more than the complex carbohydrates, like that found in bread. And we know today that that's not really true. Mm -hmm. So the simple or complex carbohydrates is more of a classification on the chemical structure, mm -hmm. and it's probably not as important to people with type 2 diabetes or type 1 diabetes um, as we used to think. Oh, okay. Okay. So now, now we know that what carbohydrates actually contains. The next question here is, how do we count these carbohydrates basically in two things? Uh, one in the nutrition label, uh, when we go to shop, and second one is in fruits or vegetables that we eat. Well, counting the carbohydrates is an ideal way for somebody with diabetes to have a lot of flexibility in the diet and um, be able to control blood sugars. So. You're absolutely right. The first step is use that food label. That nutrition facts panel gives you the information right there. The very first thing you do is go straight to that serving size because every number under the food, on that food label refers to that amount of food in the serving size. Mm -hmm. So you see what the serving size is and then you jump right down to where it says total carbohydrate and that will tell you how much carbohydrate is in that portion of food. Mm -hmm. Now all those numbers under it where it says fiber, sugars, other, all of those numbers make up that total carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. So the total carbohydrate is really the number to look for. Okay. Now not everything has a food label, so that's when it's ideal to use some smartphone apps, a carb counting book that you can carry in a purse or a glove box in the car. Um, online databases. There are a lot of places that you can get the information. Mm -hmm. And um, I really think that that's, it's critical for somebody mm -hmm. to control their blood glucose by knowing how much carbohydrate is in the foods they're eating. Mm -hmm. But the, the caveat is that portion size. Uh, if you portion. eat twice what it says, then your carbohydrate intake is twice, twice. what it says as well. Uh -huh. So uh, before you mentioned that there are you know a lot of um, charts or tools available in the market. Do you remember on top of your, your head any one or two nice tools that you advise to your uh, patients? Um, my food advisor, which is at the American Diabetes Association, and CalorieKing.com. Uh, Live Strong has an app uh -huh. that a lot of people like. My Fitness Pal has an app that a lot of people like. Mm -hmm. um, I would recommend just doing a web search and checking mm -hmm. out a few different ones. Okay, that's very good. So um, here is the next question, an interesting stuff. What is the difference between this carb counting and also this exchange diet? Okay, well the exchanges um, and the carb counting are very similar and they are two methods of meal planning that really have the same goal. Those, they, that goal is to control the amount of carbohydrate in a meal or a snack. Mm -hmm. So the exchanges are set up by food group. So we have a list of fruits and a, all the portion sizes in, those, in that list and we have a list of starchy vegetables and all the portion sizes in that and it goes on for milk and, um, and, and breads and grains and things. So all the different carb containing foods have their own group and their portion sizes. And that's very helpful for somebody to plan a meal where they're going to want to have a, make sure their meals are balanced. So having worked with a registered dietitian, hopefully, they have their exchange plan. So they might plan their breakfast to be two starches and a fruit and something else. And their lunch might be one starch and a fruit and something else. So it might be that way. If you wanted to do the carb counting, it gives you more flexibility. So instead of looking at the specific food groups, you look specifically at the total amount of carbohydrate. So if, for example, you didn't want to have fruit one night because you were having a spaghetti dinner, you wanted to have more spaghetti, you would just count the carbohydrates in all of your carb counting foods, so you might just skip mm -hmm. the fruit so you could have a larger portion of spaghetti. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe you wanted a very small portion of spaghetti because peaches are in season and you wanted an extra large peach. 
So the carb counting gives you more flexibility in that you can choose whatever food you want as long as you're, restri you're um, controlling the amount of carbohydrate. That's very good. So we are talking all the time about the numbers. Can you give us just a ball ballpark figure of how many amount, I mean, the amount of carbs should a diabetic take in a particular day? Okay, well, this is definitely a ballpark because it has to be individualized. Um, but in general, I see that most of my female patients can have about 45 grams of carbohydrate in a meal and maybe up to about 20 per snack if they even choose to have snacks. Mm -hmm. um, men, because they're a little bit bigger and they have more muscle mass that uses more glucose, can usually tend to do a little bit more, 60, sometimes even more than that per meal. And again, 15, 20, maybe 30 in a snack, should they choose to have snacks. But that is not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Some people can do a little bit more at lunch than they can do at breakfast. Some people can do a little bit more at dinner than they can do at lunch. And that's where working with a certified diabetes educator and a registered dietitian really helps to fine tune mm -hmm. the, the meal plan, the carb counting, and um, blood glucose goals for each person with diabetes. Okay, that's very good. Now we have a clear understanding of what these carbs are and how to count carbs. The next question is, uh, being a diabetic and someone who is taking an insulin every day, so what is the amount of insulin and the carb ratio that should be, um, you know, in a good proportion when you're taking, you know, X amount of carbs you need to take X amount of, uh, you need to give X amount of bolus. So what is that good ratio? Well, okay, first of all, that is only for people who take insulin and adjust it based on the amount of food that they're eating. Mm -hmm. So it's certainly not for the majority of people with diabetes. Exactly. Now, that being said, it depends on that person's ability to respond to insulin. So I have had some people who will have to use one insulin, one unit of insulin for every eight grams of carbohydrate. Mm -hmm. And I've had some who use one unit of insulin for every 25 grams of carbohydrate. So there's no general rule at all that I could give anybody, and that's something that you work on with an endocrinologist or a diabetes educator. Um, and, it, and it takes some time to figure that out because you have to look at diet and blood glucose logs very, very carefully. And also you have to, yeah. I think, check how your body responds to the insulin after eating different Absolutely. kinds of food. Absolutely, and some people will have one ratio at one meal and a different ratio at another meal. Uh -huh. Or if somebody has been exercising, they might be more sensitive and mm -hmm. can use less insulin. So it's going to vary a, a lot, a lot. and um, there really is no general rule mm -hmm. that I could give anybody. The last question is, tell us some of the few benefits that, um, uh, uh, that are helpful for a diabetic due to this carb counting. What are the benefits that somebody gets from carb counting? Well, certainly you get the most flexibility you could possibly get along with good blood glucose control. So that's the biggest benefit right there. With good blood glucose control, you're less likely to have the, the complications of diabetes that we so often see. Um, you know, and if you're doing it in a, in a helpful, smart, balanced way, which you certainly can and, and should, then the benefit is going to be reduced risk for heart disease, mm -hmm. reduced risk for cancers, lower weight, smaller waistline. So somebody could count carbohydrates and eat horrible food and not get such great benefits because they're filling up on jelly beans and gumdrops. Mm -hmm. Or somebody can carbohydrate count and have all these wonderful benefits because they're eating a variety of very wholesome foods. That's very good. Thank you, Jill. Thank you so much for being on the show and sharing your thoughts on this carb counting for people with diabetes. Thank you so okay. much.